Yo, 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 you know who I am. I kill Matthew here with you with your favorite show in the world. You know what it is. A beautiful Thursday morning here in sunny California where I'm having so much fun and I hope you are too because you are joining me here with The Breaks. And these are, are the breaks. These are the breaks. You know what it is. I thank you guys for joining me this Thursday morning. I hope you guys are, you know, having a good day and enjoying some sun. We're finally getting some sun in a place we call sunny California. But I'm here to talk some hoops. So it's time for the breakaway report, baby. So we got to talk to Summer League that's going down in extremely hot Las Vegas. I hear they're going to hit 117 at some point Boom. this weekend. Crazy. Make sure you guys stay cool out there, uh, you know, and hydrated, please. But the Summer League is going down. I think people's attention is kind of taken away from it because the big names are no longer playing so let's talk about them you have Victor Wimbenyama who had played uh, two games first game was kind of a dud everybody was like bust 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 but he said shut your mouth I am Victor I am the prospect that everybody is saying maybe is the greatest ever and he showed the whole world exactly what he can do scoring 20 plus uh 10 rebounds a bunch of blocks this guy is going to come into the league and be one of the best defenders already and offensively he is going to figure it out hell the Spurs have to figure it out they even said hey we still not sure exactly how to best use him so you know he played his two games saw what he needs to work on talked about the Spurs speed and the athletes that he's going to be playing with now so we've seen enough and we've seen that the guy is going to be great and have a chance to be the rookie of the year speaking of another guy who has a chance to be the rookie of the year we have to talk about brandon miller the second overall pick with the hornets he showed us a lot of PG to his game. So I know he scared a lot of people when he said his GOAT is Paul George. You can see why. It's clearly a guy that he wants to play like. He can knock down shots. He's shown some stuff off the dribble. Of course, we need to see more. But it's only summer league, guys. Guys are going to get better during the summer and come back ready for the season. A guy that I was excited to see in the summer, Scoot. Um, Henderson, the guy is a beast out there on the floor. He played in only one game, but he was balling. 15 quick points. He's a hooper. He is a perfect player for this era of guards. You know, you've seen Derrick Rose, Russell Westbrook, uh, Ja Morant. I think he is that next super athletic point guard that is going to have the league waiting to go and watch his games and so excited to go and see it. So shout out to Scoot. Shout out to the Thompson Twins. Uh, Amain was able to do his thing the first game, balling out against Scoot, showing us his unique uh, abilities before his ankle injury. His brother is balling as well with the Pistons. I love to see the Thompson Twins play well. They are going to be players if given the opportunity to have a chance to try to compete for the Rookie of the Year. Then... It's not just about the rookie guys with Summer League. It's about the second-year, third-year players as well. And I have to shout out to these two second-year players, Jabari Smith Jr. What he's doing for the Rockets, he has balled out, hit a game winner. He has shown that he has taken his time off seriously. He's like, hell, I'm not about to sit out when I have an opportunity to do something I love, play hoop, and even in front of the national eye. And the guy is having a great, great summer. I'm so happy that he decided to play. For you guys out there looking to take your game to the next level, show up. Play some summer league basketball. Show everybody that you got better and play against some of the other rising talent in the league. And that's what Jabari has done. He has looked amazing. It makes you excited as the Rockets when you have, you know, uh, the Thompson coming in. You have uh, Van Fleet coming in. You have Dylan Brooks that, hey, 
They're young. They got a couple of vets. They have a chance to try to make a run for the playoff spot, and it starts with a guy like Jabari Smith playing in the summer league and playing well. And, of course, the guy. We have to talk about him. Everybody talks about Victor. Last year, this guy was getting a lot of hype coming in. Drafted by the Oklahoma City Thunder, Chet Holmgren, who last night put up 25 points, 9 rebounds, 5 blocks. He's showing that if he can stay healthy, that he is going to be a nice piece over there with SGA. They have a chance to make a playoff run as well. So keep your eyes out on the Thunder. Keep your eyes out on Chet because he is clearly a baller and he looks like he's healthy. What are your thoughts on the Summer League so far? I love it. The guys are balling. I love to see the young players play. I know we're not watching as much because of the big names are playing but it's still great basketball being played out there in a very hot Las Vegas so I got to talk about somebody who's always very hot when it comes to the social media world Twitter and things like that Kevin Durant and I love the fact that KD says man I'm a human being just like you. You can go on Twitter and have your rants and go back and forth with people all day. Damn it, though I'm a millionaire, I can do the same thing. And KD, you know, he had Twitter ablaze uh, yesterday as he was going back and forth with people over offense, over defense. And damn it, I believe that he's right. I believe that the game of basketball is about a bucket. You don't get points for blocking shots. You don't get points for steals. You don't get points for a great stop. You get points by putting the ball into the rim and scoring, whether it's layup, dunks, mid-range shots, or three-point shots. The game has always been about a bucket. Of course, defense is going to help you win. You got to stop people because you can't allow people to score more than you do. But if you can't score, you can't win. So that is the game of basketball. When you play 21, for all of us out there who plays casual basketball, it's not about, hey, man, I got five straight stops on you. I win. No. Boom. Who was the first to 21 points? So no matter how you play basketball, horse, damn it. Horse is about who can make the shots, not if, oh, I'm going to come block you and get points. It's about scoring the basketball. So I'm, I'm siding with you, Kevin Durant. You are 100% right. The game is about getting the buckets. All of the greatest players that we talk about, all times of course we talk about them being great defensive players because that has to be some part of it but it really comes down to scoring a bucket we just celebrated lebron james this year for being the all-time scorer you will never see a big time celebration for the all-time block leader all-time rebounder all-time steals leader because the game is about buckets and kevin durant is uh he's right that's what it's all about. Offense over defense all day for me, and that's what sell tickets anyway. So, damn it, you better believe in Kevin Durant when he talks about his offense. So, put some respect on his name. And, KD, keep going at these people, man. I know you got a lot to say. Don't be afraid. Don't have people have you creating burner accounts anymore. Use your own account. Let people know how you feel, man. Shout out to Kevin Durant. He is a real one for that, man. I love it. And uh, speaking about... LeBron James, the all-time scoring leader. He was there at the ESPYs last night, close to the Crypto.com Arena where I was, checking out the Sparks and Aces, which I'm going to talk about a little more. But LeBron announced that he won't retire. And, you know, for the LeBron fans out there, they were making it such a big deal. But we already knew this. We knew LeBron wasn't going to retire. You see the team that Bye -bye. the Lakers have assembled to try to win another championship for the greatest franchise in the world. Why would LeBron James walk away? But we all know it's LeBron James. He likes moments like this. We all remember the decision, right? Where he could have just chose a team in silence and let the world know that way. But he had a TV celebration to celebrate the, 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 the decision. So, of course, he's like, I'm going to show up to the ESPYs, win this award, and tell everybody that I'm not done. I have a lot in the tank. And it's LeBron James. Though I don't think he's the greatest of all time when it comes to basketball player, he is the most physically gifted basketball player that we have ever seen. That's why he can be so late into his career and still be a great, great player and ball out and have a chance at an MVP, have a 
chance at winning the championship because he's LeBron James. So, of course, I have to put some respect on his name. I'm happy that he's coming back with me being here in Tinseltown and being a Laker fan. But we all knew what was going to happen. So, don't play dumb. And you guys, make sure you go get a break because I, I'm coming with some heat today. So, I hope that you are ready because I'm bringing more heat than the summer sun, baby. So, I hope you are loving it and I got more for you. Be back in a minute, baby. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. What's up, y'all? This is Lexi Brown with the LA Sparks, and you're watching Infanity TV. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I am here with you, Michael Matthew, here to tell you more about what's the happenings around the sports world and the entertainment world. Of course, I got you covered here at the break. So we left off talking about the greatness of LeBron James, uh, and he will be returning. But we have to talk about something that the NBA is doing that I'm, I'm not really a fan of. I guess maybe I have to get used to it. It's a little weird. But we'll see what's going to happen. But if you don't know about the uh, NBA in-season tournament that is going to be set, where the games are going to be played, um, Tuesday and Friday in November, and then at the early part of December, you're going to have your semifinals matchup and your championship there was uh, multiple groups created, the Western Conference and then the uh, Eastern Conference side to where these teams are going to face off and then we're going to get a winner. It's very weird. I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys like it. I'm not the hugest fan of it because how important is it truly? Um, I, I'm wondering, um, you know, Will it matter to the players? You know, we always hear about the legacy of, of all-time players. Mm -mm. And, you know, you want to go and get championships. You want to get a defensive player of the year, MVP, and things like that. But will it even matter to a guy like LeBron James to say, hey, let me go and try to win this tournament? Will that do anything for your all-time ranking? Say if you win one championship, but you win – three in-season tournaments, will that give you more rank? Or say if you go and win six or ten of them and you only win one championship, does that give you any more rank when it comes to your all-time player rankings? I'm just not sure if it does anything to impact a player's career. I'm not sure if the players are going to be like, hey, we have to make sure that we go and win this because you can win this every year. Isn't it all about the Larry O'Brien trophy? Doesn't that matter most? You know, so I don't know how to play players are going to feel. I don't know if players are going to be going hard. 
we already see we're in the NBA where guys sit out and don't play games. Are guys not going to care about this in season tournament? Or is the NBA going to say, your, your ass better be on the floor, you better be playing in these games, and you better be ready to try to show up and take your team to the semifinals and championship in Las Vegas for this in season tournament. So I'm just not sure about it. We're going to see with the you know the first season of it if the players care or are the young teams who know they're not going to win the championship are really going to try to go the hardest so that they can maybe win this and get that feeling of winning something. But I just don't know. I don't like them adding more of a team thing. The team goal should be at the end of the season, we want to be the last team standing winning the championship, not about some in season tournament. So I don't know about it i'm not the hugest fan of it i know the wnba has a commissioner cup and it works well for them but i don't think that you need a mid-season uh championship or tournament anything in the mid-season that matters because i just don't see the players thinking about it too much um then I got to shout out the W. I just talked about it. I, I was in the building, Crypto.com Arena. The Las Vegas Aces showed up, and they put a beating on the Los Angeles Sparks, 97-78, 32-15 at the end of the first quarter. Asia had like 16 points. She is the baller, clearly the best player on both ends of the floor. I know Brianna Stewart is challenging her, but it is Asia Wilson. And I was just sitting back. Just seeing how the fans reacted, seeing how, you know, as packed of a house that we've seen in the uh, Crypto.com Arena for a Sparks game this year. And it just let me know and it reminded me that this Las Vegas Aces team is really the WNBA's version of the 90s Bulls and the big three uh, Miami Heat with LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. That's the aura that they carry. All the fans were just crowding around, uh, you know, their bench, crowded around where they were leaving and coming in to the uh, court because everybody loves this team. They have four all-stars on this roster and Candace Parker. Four all-star players and Candace Parker. You have the best player in the game in Aja Wilson. This team, it, it just gives you that aura of the Bulls. I don't know how everybody's traveling and going to watch them in other arenas, but I know last night... That crowd in L.A. loved that team. Everything that they did pre-game, during the game, post-game, and it just gave you that feel. So shout-out to the Las Vegas Aces. I know I talk about them a lot when I'm here on the breaks every Thursday because you have to talk about greatness. Greatness is everything for you. And shout-out to the Aces. They're doing their thing as we head into this All-Star break. And the All-Star break is here. Um, everybody's going to be tapping in, especially if you're a fan of the W. The ratings have gone up on ESPN on on ABC by like 43% uh, for the game. So shout out to the WNBA. They're doing some things right and trying to get more people to watch. But I have an idea that I wish they would do for the All-Star game. And I hope you know you WNBA purists uh, don't be too mad at me. But it, it's all about fun, right? It's all about doing something new. And I heard Shaq talk about it before that the only thing that the WNBA game is missing is dunks. So why not try in the WNBA All-Star game that you put the courts, the, the rims to nine feet, right? And you see if the ladies can go and dunk and things like that, practices, you know, let them get it through. And let's watch a game of these ladies playing on a shorter rim. And let's see if they can go and get tomahawks and you get poster dunks. I guarantee most of those plays will be at the top of ESPN, Sports Center top 10 plays. And maybe it can be an idea to say, hey, maybe this is what we can do to take our game even further to another level. Because I know basketball is a very serious thing. You have people's legacies and careers and names created off the sports, but it's still a game and it's entertainment and people want to be excited. So if people can see big time dunks from these ladies because the court is a foot shorter, I think it's something that you have to explore. So I would love to see them do it in an all-star game because it will be big time to see some big time dunks. Can you imagine on a fast break, Asia Wilson with a big time dunk? Can you imagine Brittany Griner dunking on a few bodies under the court? It will be big time. So WNBA, try it out. Kathy, if you hear me, Miss Commissioner, 
Give it a try. Boom. Think about it. Start it off in practice and carry it over to the All-Star game because excitement is what brings people's eyes and ears to your game, and that will be great, baby. So, hey, before we get out of here for another break, break it or leave it time. The NBA flopping rule is here. As you know, there are going to be technical fouls for people flopping, so I'm so happy for it. You breaking it or leaving it, we better leave this here because I'm tired of this damn flopping and all of these people trying to take away this pure game of basketball because it's starting to look like soccer out there and you don't want the game of basketball to look like soccer at all so i love the fact that this flopping rule or is in place do you like it do you love it do you break it or do you leave it let me know down below in the comments but hey I, I'm giving you guys another chance to get you some more water, get some more popcorn, because like I said, I am bringing you that fire today, and I will see you again after this next break, baby. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Chanel Gwimike, and you're watching Infanity Television. Boom. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I'm, I'm not done yet. I got some more fire for you, baby. So you know I'm taking you from the hardwood to the gridiron because, uh, you know, I have to. Because football is the biggest sport in America, and we can't deny that. So here for the NFL Breakdown, I'm starting you off. The show Quarterback is out now on Netflix, starring Patrick Mahomes, Kirk Cousins, and Marcus Mariota. And I've been able to check out a few episodes, and I'm going to tell you this. This show is amazing. One of the best shows that I've seen in a while. It is so great that it takes you into the lives of these quarterbacks and lets you see what they what they do throughout the week. You know, it takes you in to the game plan. And Marcus Mariota sitting down with his wife, and she's going over the plays with her so that he can remember the terminology and things like that. You see, you know, what Patrick Mahomes is doing when he's dealing with his family being a young father and things like that um then a lot of the in-game adjustments and conversation that you Kirk Cousins the beating and his body has been taking throughout the season you get to learn a lot about it and for a guy like myself who's never been a professional player I love to see this it kind of puts me in the shoes of these guys let me know what they're going through let me know what they feel and I love this whoever created this idea Peyton Manning I see that you're an executive producer you got this one right it was great 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 i can't wait to watch all of the episodes hell i know they're already going to be preparing for season two and i'm wondering who they're going to choose but man it's been great so far i love it but to keep it in the tv world for the nfl the nfl has chosen to put the new york jets 
J E T S, Jets, Jets, Jets. They're going to be on hard knocks, and I believe it's a great, great choice. You have Aaron Rodgers there in the building, a Boom. team that's going to have a chance to be a playoff team. Hell, some people even think that they have a chance to be a Super Bowl contender, but not so fast. I don't believe they're going to be that good, but they're going to be really good. So we're going to be able to follow them with training camp. Uh, we're going to see Zach Wilson, the top five pick, top three pick that he was now going to be backing up Aaron Rodgers. And let's see how he's going to be adjust and which players are going to bring fun TV to HBO. So I love uh, our Showtime, wherever they're showing it. But I, I love that Hard Knocks is still going. I love the choice of the New York Jets. So let's see what's going to happen. And I have to give my flowers, man. I have to give flowers to the great Great, great. Patrick Mahomes. And once again, the SBs were here last night, not too far from actually where I'm recording today here in Infanity Television Studios. But the guy had one of the greatest seasons that a quarterback can have. The most total yards all time uh, with 5,570. He was the passing yards leader. He was a passing TD leader. He was NFL MVP. He won another Super Bowl and was, of course, the Super Bowl MVP, a pro bowler, first team all pro. He was the SB's best NFL player. And, of course, he was the SB's best male athlete. It was one of the greatest seasons that we have ever seen for a quarterback I think because you know we're in an era we like to debate and people like to hate on greatness sometimes but we don't want to underestimate and underappreciate this guy he is one of the greatest players that we have seen in the NFL already and he still has a long career ahead of him and I know some people might say this guy's a homer isn't he a chief fan I don't give a damn I respect greatness and this guy is an all-time great already and we need to love this guy and show him a lot of love if you're watching the quarterback, like I talked about earlier, he is one of the superstars of the show, and he shows you why day in and day out that he is that guy. So put some respect on his name and keep it that way. Patrick Mahomes, the premier guy in sports in America, you could say, and the premier guy in the NFL, showing love to him. I have to do it. So now I have to take you to the baseball diamond because, you know, the MLB All-Star went down, and it started off... Man, it started off with some heat. You started off with two great catches off the bat. Uh, the NL were able to finally defeat the AL after a nine-year drought. But all of the talk was about Otani and how Seattle was showing this man love, love, love. The tampering season begins, you know. It looks like he's not going to re-sign with the Angels. No one is sure. So just you better believe that people are going to be screaming his name, saying whatever they can do to try to get Otani to their team. So it was great to see that there with the All-Star game. Um, and I can't wait for the second half of the season. You got a player that's chasing to try to hit 400. And then let's see what this Otani heat is going to look like. But I got to talk about people that's breaking all of the rules. The guy that are breaking the rules is really easy, easy. It's the Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagle players are going on podcast after podcast complaining about their Super Bowl loss in their field. Don't you know that the other team had to play on the field too? The Chiefs played on the same exact field and they won and they took care of business. So stop the complaining. We're close to a brand new season. Training camp is around the corner. Shut your mouths. Come back. Play some great football. Let's see if you can even make it back to the Super Bowl. And when you're there, try to win this time. So that's who's breaking all the rules. It's those players for the Philadelphia Eagles. Just stop complaining. You guys took an L. So what? A lot of teams lose in the Super Bowl. But it's time for me to break out. I got three minutes for you, so I'm coming at you fast. Secret Invasion. Episode 4 is in the books. Very entertaining show. Very detective-like show. If you haven't checked it out yet, go and do so. Samuel Jackson, applaud to you. You are doing a hell of a job. But Episode 4 was really dope if you're tapping it in. The Ice Cube versus the Biggie debate. You know I had to talk about it. People are talking about who's the better storyteller. You know, I'm not West Coast biased because I believe, you know, in rankings that Biggie should be higher than Ice Cube. But when it comes to storytelling, Ice Cube is that guy. So many great songs showing his uh, storytelling skills. He gave us one of the greatest songs. He took us on a day in L.A. where today was a good day. So put some respect on that guy's name because I believe that Ice Cube is the most underrated rapper of all times. We should be hearing his name in more top 
fives. We should be hearing his name in more top tens when it comes to all-time rappers, but you just don't because people look at the movies and things that he's done, but go back to his run from um, Straight out of Compton with N.W.A. to uh, America's Most Wanted, Death Certificate, uh, Lethal Injection, The Predator. He had one of the greatest runs from 87 to 92 that we have ever seen in hip-hop. So he needs to be in more of these conversations. But, you know, rest in peace to Biggie. Of course, he is one of the top five guys of all time. But they're both legends. No matter how you look at it, they're both legends that we should respect. But we got to respect Ice Cube even more because he's possibly the greatest storyteller that hip-hop has ever Ever seen shout out to jay-z and will smith because they're doing some big time things um they have invested 165 million dollars into a startup that will help low-income americans become homeowners so i gotta give props to people doing great things especially when there are two superstars like will smith and Jay Z, um, Tiny Desk. We 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 talk about it. Juvenile just blazing, but Tiny Desk. I got an idea that can make you a lot of money, and I hope they can somehow do it. Because you're talking about breaking the internet. If Kendrick Lamar ever does a Tiny Desk with all of the great work that he has, all of the great albums. He will break the internet and everybody will talk about it all day nonstop. So, hey, Tiny Desk, NPR, make it happen for us. And, you know, before I get out of here, I got I have to give a shout out to a name that we have to follow. Christopher Eubanks. He is possibly the next great male American tennis star. He's the third black American to make an open era to reach the Wimbledon uh, Wimbledon quarterfinals so make sure that you guys remember that left uh name christopher eubanks got my eye on you man keep balling let's see if you can take it to the next level and win you a major there in tennis but i'm done that's that's all the heat i got for you today because i know it's enough outside already no matter where you are so make sure that you guys tap in with me i will be back next thursday of course you can follow me, Instagram, Twitter, Mike Kelta, PG, M-Y-K-E-L-L-T-H-E-P-G. And I'm always here to bring you your favorite show. And make sure you tap in all throughout the week for your favorite show, The Breaks. I catch you guys next week, baby. Peace.